Hello, my name is Mr. Pendergrass and I'm here at my house in West Seattle. I am the elementary instrumental music teacher at Fairmount Park School in Seattle and today we're here for a trombone lesson. We're going to talk about what it means to really understand how to read notation on the music staff. Not only identify the pitch name, but also the position. I'll take you through some warm-ups just first on our mouthpiece to really get our mouth in shape and we're going to play some tunes. And then I have a really fun duet, an original composition that I wrote called Gliss Town. Gliss is short for glissando, that sound that a trombone makes when you move the slide up and down. So we're going to have some fun with that. You're going to need your trombone from this lesson, a pencil and a paper so you can write down some ideas. So I'm going to give you a moment to grab those things and then we'll get started with our lesson for today. So now that you have your supplies, we're going to start practicing. But first, I want to share with you a word that I use that helps me think about practicing so I don't waste my time. And we're going to be doing these things in our lesson today. The word is brass, the same metal that your trombone is made out of. You can see from the slide that each letter in the word brass represents a concept you should think about every time you practice. B stands for buzz and breath. R stands for repetition and rest. A stands for articulation and agility. S stands for sing it. And the final S stands for share it. Sometimes when we use the concepts from this word today, I'll tell you what it is. Sometimes I won't tell you, but you can think about whether or not you're hitting on one of those letters in brass every time you practice so you don't waste any time. Okay, we're gonna get started with that first B in the brass method, buzz and breath. So make sure you have your trombone mouthpiece and let's do some buzzes, some long buzzes like this. You can play them as long as you want. Maybe go a little lower. And I like to point my chin to the ground when I go lower, maybe higher. Now combine some highs and lows for some sirens. And finally, I like to buzz a simple song. How about Hot Cross Buns? And you could keep going. I'm gonna let you try some of those buzz warm-ups on your own. Before we start playing, I want to just make sure you're holding your trombone correctly, okay? It should rest on your left shoulder, not like this, and you're not holding it up. This weight back here allows you to rest it on your left shoulder. I'm already assuming you know how to put it on your slide, and all of this is great. Also, with my right hand that moves the slide, I only hold it with these two fingers so I can move it. My left hand curls under the bell and my first finger goes on top here and I sit like this. Too high, too low, right about there. Then you can have really good posture when you play and you don't have to worry about doing weird things. So, should look like this before you play. Okay, now that you have your trombone and your mouthpiece back on, let's play this little exercise you're going to see on the screen. There's six pitches listed there with their letter names below and the position names above. Let's play these. One, two, three, four. Now this time, I'm gonna put up a different slide with the same pitches, but only the positions. Think about those positions as you play it again. One, two, three, four. Okay, we're gonna play it one more time. And this time we're gonna see the pitches with only their letter names. 
see if you can play it now. One, two, three, four. Now this last way, we're going to only play with just the notation, just the pitches. Nothing written below and nothing written above. Do your best. One, two, three, four. The goal for us is when we see notation on the staff, we know the position name and the pitched letter name. So I want to give you a moment to practice this. I'm going to put up a slide that doesn't have any of the letters of the pitch names or the positions and see if you can practice. The first time you do it, think through either the position name or the letter name until you can do it without any mistakes. So were you able to play the pitches without seeing anything written above or below them? You know, I really want you to be able to play those pitches as you see them on the music staff without writing some notes underneath. It's okay to write a few positions if you need it or a few notes, but often I see kids writing something under every single note. That's not going to help you in the long run. So take your time, learn those pitches. B flat, first position, C, sixth position make up some flashcards, do whatever it takes so that you're looking at the pitches on the music staff and not what you've written above or below the pitches. Let's play a song that we know from our band book, Merrily We Roll Along, also known as Mary Had a Little Lamb. And we're going to play this twice because as you can see there, there's a repeat sign at the end. Ready? One, two, three, four. <laughs> familiar songs like that because it has a lot of those pitches except for the G that we did in our last exercise for practice. Okay, we're going to do another song and this one's going to add the G and this is called Farm Out, otherwise known as Old MacDonald Had a Farm. I want you to be looking at the time signature which you see up there. It's in 2-4 time. And we also have a tied note, which means we're going to hold that note for three total counts because it's a half note tied to a quarter note. Let's play Farm Out just one time. One, two, ready, go. <laughs> songs you can practice because you probably know those tunes or melodies. So, something to think about when you practice at home. Okay, I'm going to teach you a technique that is really exclusive to trombones because of our slide. It's called the glissando. 
and it's where you slide from two pitches. I'm going to teach you three glissandos. The first one is like this. That's pretty fun. Second one. And the third one. Let's talk about each of these. The first one, you're going to go from sixth position, and on one breath, as you blow, move to first, and then back down to six, all on one breath. Okay, try that with me. Ready? The sixth position is about as far as you can reach your arm out there. The second one is a shorter one, just from one to three to one, sounds like this. Will you try that with me? Ready? And the last one for our song is from four to six. Let's try that one. Fourth position, just right where your slide meets the bell there, the end of the slide. Okay, take a look at this slide. This is the song, Gliss Town, and you'll notice the glissandos have lines between the notes. I'm going to play it. Follow along. One, two, three. The key to playing a good glissando is to have a lot of breath as you blow. Let's play this together. Are you ready? Maybe a bit slower. One, two, three, four. Repeat. second part I made and I want you to play the part that you see on the screen but I'm gonna play another part just above you so it's gonna sound different but it'll have the same rhythm one two ready go <laughs> Okay, I'm going to put the original back up there and practice it on your own. Thank you for playing with me today in this trombone lesson. I hope you will repeat the concepts you learned. Don't do them once, do them over. You've got nothing but time now, and that's actually a good thing when you're learning how to play your instrument. Also, continue your education on what a good trombone player sounds like. Google professional trombone players, top trombone players. Ask your parents first, and you'll probably find some really good players on YouTube. Listen to them, copy what they do, and enjoy learning about some new trombone players. I hope to see you another time.